I ran up a check, I might do it again Enemies close, had me thinking they're friends Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my hands Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend If I do it once, I do it again Add it up, add it up. bankroll, bankroll. Euro. Euro, peso, peso. Add, it up. add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me Hello everyone, welcome to the Spot Real Talk. My name's Tara. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And Lawanda's out today, but she'll be back next week. Um, but we are here to discuss uh, Power Force. Uh, this is going to be season one, episode three, and it was titled Firestarter. So if you guys hang tight, we'll be right back. We're talking force. Um, this week it, it's kind of getting getting crazy. You know, things are starting to pick up. Of course, we know that they're going to do a lot of storytelling up front, and it may move a little bit slower than people might want. <laughs> um, but you know, trust and believe. If you pay attention to the power, um, their whole forecast for the season, things will start picking up by episode five. And I think it's not terribly slow we're definitely still getting some action um here and there so i i like the episode and mm -hmm. we got to see tommy and liliana have kind of forged a, a, a partnership <laughs> for now at least <laughs> um i'm still a little sketchy about liliana <laughs> i don't yeah. know about y'all um yeah. but she she proved her value when she broke the product down and was able to double it without compromising the quality so you know, Tommy yeah. was impressed. Mm -hmm. And we see that the two of them, look, taking bumps in the morning. We see that Tommy is still cokehead. I guess nothing changed, you know. Well, he, did, <laughs> he, did take, he did take smaller quantities. He did say uh, smaller ones yeah. and, and stuff. He, he had to test the product. But right. both of them, and, <laughs> and they did toast the ghost. I, I, I told you, Ron, offline, I, I thought of you because I was like, oh, they're going to ghost nod that 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 Rod loves to see, mm -hmm. and I was happy to see it too. Honestly, look, anytime yeah. you bring in ghosts, you know you you're. I'm a fan. I'm a big old fan. Right. So, right. But getting back to Miss Lily, <laughs> you can't trust anybody with a coke and a smile. Because I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> now. look, where did that coke come from? It's way too many bags, and then. You know, you freely cutting it up and getting, you know, I look, I get your methodology and all of that, but what are you setting uh, Tommy up to? And like she even said to Tommy, I go where the money is. So mm -hmm. I really can't trust her being on my team. But yeah. you know, I know Tommy, Tommy always has a plan, you know, sure. but but right now, mm. Ron, me and you are on the same page because at the end of the episode, when she kind of came back to Tommy, it's like, where's my half? Yeah. You, know, you can't move it. Then I, I know somebody else that can't. And I'm like, and Tommy kind of had the same look on his face. Like, where did you get this from? Yeah. Right. And he so, said, that's no, I'm going to hold on to all of it. He shut mm -hmm. that down quick. Yeah. And that little card that was on the back of the spider. You remember? Yeah. That? Him right in it. yeah that, but it, I'm wondering, it, did, did she really get it from her supplier or did she... I, did she steal it? Like, was it something else that happened that might have people coming back after her and Tommy? I think exactly. she stole it. Because Tommy said, you don't have the money to kind of pick up that kind of weight. So where, you know, she probably stole it. And well, she said whoever, it, it was somebody some, somebody that attacked her or something like that. And I think she ended up killing the guy. Yeah, that's... That so was, yeah. she got to know that somebody's still going to be coming after the product. Most so. definitely. Right. Exactly. So that's just heat. That's just more heat coming toward Tommy right now so and i was surprised tommy was so willing to get involved uh you know but then again tommy has to make the deals he's got to make, make it the money yeah. he's mm -hmm. got to make the money so if that made sense that that made total sense but you know i have her my head would be on a swivel with her everywhere she goes i'm watching yeah i, I think, think no I, think he, I, I think he will 
care. Yeah, and you know, meanwhile, Tommy's plan to move the product is he's going to gentrify the Chicago drug business. He's trying to play we are the world here. And I was like, Chicago going to sit and segregate it forever. <laughs> and he think that he's going to be able to come in <laughs> and, and just have them, like you said, sing we are the world. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, makes sense, you know, uh, Flynn, Ideally, Flynn, yeah, the Flynn family they got the they got the pills, you know. Tommy's got the the drug, the um, cocaine, oh. and so it it yeah it makes sense. Let the North and the South do what they do, but you know Walter man with his <laughs> old a you know um, racist uh, racist a self, you uh -huh. know he ain't ready, and you know. We are, we said earlier how kids you know go against the f family the father because of what the father wants to continue to do and the fam the, the kids you know they always see a bigger picture and the father mm -hmm. wants to hang on to nothing but his throne that that's all it is you know he just doesn't want to be dethroned by anybody and Most he has all. fears that like working with the black and Latinos will get him kind of ousted by you know the um the Italians and some of the other affluent groups or whatever so he he fears being associated with them and getting ousted well his, his son told him everything if you don't do it we're becoming extinct and right mm -hmm. and he has to understand that uh sometimes you know you have to lay aside your your differences and basically your differences when it only has to deal with race is just a whole bunch of trumped up you know charges that don't don't really go anywhere or make sense mm -hmm. so, and that's what i see in him and to me, it's good he's not long for this world, you know, for whatever he's got, it's gonna take him <laughs> anyways. So, hey. But yeah, I guess before that deal even went down, they had the initial plan to kind of like go to this other guy first. I think his name was Colin. Um, and so Colin it looked like he was definitely on some stuff. He yeah. had the girl in there that was ODing, you know, mm -hmm. about to call the cops. And mm -hmm. he's just sitting there jamming to the music. <laughs> oh, naked DJ trying to, you know, look, look. Whatever. It's security fat Tony. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's like, you're not fat. <laughs> yeah. Fat Tony got four kids. So why is he even in the ring? You know, well, I mean, Fat Tony didn't hesitate to give Colin up at the end. He was yeah. like, look at the freight <laughs> elevator right. back there. Yeah, he said, that was like, 2,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that thing holds two thousand pounds. You can do whatever you want to with it, and you know, yeah, he gave him up, but and good, rightfully so. How you, look, this dude put a three fifty seven magnum in the face of uh, uh, Walter's son. But he was talking big. He was basically sunning him. You know, <laughs> you your father's son. You in his shadows. You're not a man. Look at this little boy coming up in here. Look, you even got your backup. He's the real, um, you know, force. The real. Uh, I guess the the player the power player here so he he really did son him but he, he did yeah. I know but and I'm glad Tommy was there to kind of take control of it because Vic is a punk I mean Tiffany you say this all the time I, I said that but he stepped up this I I gotta say this he did step up this episode because uh, he took the the uh, the reins and he and he took him out okay. Tommy said spray paint the walls but the walls, and he took the pillow and he did it i was like because i was surprised i was like he even got the drop on him with the, the gun and stuff i said okay vic <laughs> but you know what vic and we talked about this whole situation with gloria tommy's back up in gloria's you know <laughs> getting in, in the with mix. her again this Tommy's week back in the mix <laughs> and vic had already previously an episode gone to gloria's mother's grave so he got her a new headstone and all that like he was really trying to put in the work to show her that he's like he still wants her but gloria told him like you really gotta step up you gotta show me and what does he go do but work with the, the guy that's digging her out i'm like come on vic like well, because he's trying to, because he's trying to prove something to his dad. So that's the, you know, that's the thing. He's still writing, you know. I, I think it's actually more trying to prove to Gloria because Gloria is really, you know, headstrong on Vic being under his father's wing. Because remember, it's his father that's keeping them from getting married or or whatever they want. To, right. They were right. Doing. So actually, getting involved with the, um, you know. Um, 
a diamond yeah. and, and CB, CBD or CBI, or whatever. Yeah. See, and, you know, getting involved with that organization helps him <laughs> away from his father because he's in, now that he's involved with them, you know, once he breaks away from his father, he can now go ahead and do what he wants to with, uh, with Gloria. The problem is his father ain't going to see it that way. Mm -mm. And, and the that, problem is yeah. Gloria ain't gonna see it that way either <laughs> because I, I, don't, I, I don't think Gloria wants him out of the game. You know, I, I know I, I'm talking about Gloria don't want him. Period. Uh, well, yeah, she's she don't feel like Tommy. Yeah, yeah, she, 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 she cares. She cares about Vic still, but she just was like, you know, you can't even stand up for me with your family. And he's mm -hmm. talking about, you know, last week he was talking about running away to be together and stuff. Like who? Nobody wants a man like that. Like right. No, you and Tommy be, comes in with the swag. He comes in with the, you know, he's he's a suave, the smooth talker, and he has the actions to back it up. Like yeah. Tommy really carries himself in a much more confident way, and that's I think true. that's attractive to her. It and is. he's yeah. apparently putting it down because she's coming back. Oh, right. Huh. We saw how he was putting it down, you know. But yeah. Anyways, I I think that it's going to be real interesting when she finds out that Vic and Tommy have hooked up because now she's got to come clean and what are you going to tell Vic well he tried he she tried to come clean to Tommy Tommy ain't want to hear Tommy right. ain't here so it's going to be real interesting because see you can't mix business and pleasure mm -hmm. so you know once they once Tommy goes to approach Diamond about the deal we see that Jannard is there as well they have the, the boxing gym and of course there's this feud like we're not working with them. You know, Jannard has his way of wanting to do things. And then of course, Diamond has his own way. And Jannard's way is much more violent, less thought out. Whereas <laughs> it seems like Diamond is really trying to be more like less hot, you know, more discreet about things and more thoughtful in how they approach the situation. And so if it was to happen where the North side and the South side kind of link up and exchange, um, I guess, territories, it really could be beneficial for all parties. And I think Jannard wasn't able to see the big picture in that, but they box it out, <laughs> you know, nonetheless. And I, I was looking at Jannard and I'm like, I don't know if you get in the boxing ring with somebody who had that cauliflower ear, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he probably know a little something about fighting and, Jannard seemingly like had it thought out that he would allow Diamond to win the fight because we heard him later on talking to Elijah where he's like, yeah, basically I allowed him to win, but it wasn't looking good for him in that ring. <laughs> you know, Diamond was about ready to take him out before he had to stop himself. In which he shouldn't have. He should have, but I mean, I understand why, but you know, I, Jannard is just a hot, again, a hothead. And, um, you know, it's just sad, it's, you know. Yeah, and we might have lost Tiff for a second, but I'm sure she'll come back in yeah. any moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of Jannar, I just think that, and, and we kind of heard it a little bit when they were walking through the park initially at the um, beginning of the episode, um, they were walking and they were talking about things that they wanted to do for their community. And Diamond was kind of hesitant to do it with drug money. But Jannard is like, does it matter where the money comes from if it's going to benefit the community? Like the white kids up north got their stuff. Do you think they care where the uh, money came from? And that was the best point Jannard could have made about what he's doing. Because I agree whole, wholeheartedly that, you know, and, and too often we see that in the you know, Black communities, you know, they struggle for every penny they, they can get their hands on. And, you know, football fields and baseball fields mm -hmm. are usually just muddy and you know, Rockfield, yet, you know, you want us to compete uh, with other, uh, you know, groups at Father North or even in some states that have it a 10 times better than what we have, it, and yet we got to compete against them. So right on for that, you know, I, hey, I was, I was all for it. Right. Yeah. I wasn't mad at his argument there, um, but he's just so combative, like all the time. And once they kind of like got into, um, onto the baseball field, and you know they had that little argument there the cops was watching you know the cop been again yeah. so i'm like 
I think that that cop, like he's obviously a dirty cop. We seen him in the um, beginning talking to Vic about being paid off for, you know, looking out for them, making sure Vic's guys get off clean. And even, um, earlier, and even when, uh, you know, Vic approached the cop after getting out, um, after paying nearly $10,000 to get mm -hmm. a couple of his boys out. Right. You know, and then he's, he's blaming the cop for having not having to do his job but just like the cop said you got an alderman problem you don't have a cop problem yeah and he's, that's above my pay grade and i don't understand why they don't understand that just because you bought a cop doesn't mean he can do whatever for you you know well yeah and later on they did realize that because you know yeah, that was like talk, go talk to the alderman because we need right. somebody else with more pull well i think the cop did right by mentioning alderman because that's where the buck stops you know or yeah. it, stops, it starts you know so if you're gonna if you got qualms against somebody you need to go see all of them and, and his father knew better you know yeah but you know i was not feeling the way pop sent claudia in there you know basically telling her to dress provocatively and stuff like that i'm like what father does that to their daughter oh, and then one one step above he says add some sugar to it yeah like, you know that, yeah i'm like that was wild so i don't know pops might gotta get the hands for that comment and all the racist comments he threw out yeah. later in the episode get the hand in my size 12 and a half shoe yeah he <laughs> needs to get all that you know yeah because he was wilding with that part but you know claudia she went there she got the deal done and she even threatened him like look i, I know where your daughter go to school i got the drop on her if you don't want her little cute uniform getting dirtied up you better <laughs> fall in line masterfully done i love that I yeah love so we see done. claudia got a little bite to her too got some bite that's right and then you know later on she goes to um to her girlfriend i guess if that's what you want to call it they have the new drug and it's not just any old drug like some pill or something like that it's something that was previously a diet pill but it got rejected by the fba for being yeah. uh fda for being too similar to cocaine right. so i think she's playing like um she gets the best of both worlds because she still has like the um strength of cocaine in that drug mm -hmm. but it's in pill form and so it's kind of like in line with her family's operation operation but and, yeah so i think that and, and when she talked to tommy she seemed like she was like telling him like look what i got is better than what you got and so if we decide to work together you know, I don't know if they're actually going to because she told the girlfriend, like, this is the me and you thing. Like, I'm not bringing my family in on this. Yeah, like, I, think, it's I, think, I think that what that meant more so than anything else is you keep your mouth shut because I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Stay in line. Don't say anything to my folks. You keep your mouth shut, but I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's the whole point. Now, I, I personally didn't like the way she rolled up on Tommy to begin with. Because, <laughs> she cut you know, him off on the highway. <laughs> Yeah, you can get shot like that, you know. Tommy didn't really know who that was. Mm -hmm. you know, he got out of the car. So, you know, just like he's just like Tommy said, you know, you rolling up on me like an OG. That yeah. You kill. Yeah, but I mean, I do like Claudia style. She definitely knows how to take the reins. I agree. Um, but see, we have the same thing going on on both sides, though. Um, because I think we have Claudia and Vic both trying to compete for the next big thing. Um, although they're not really working together on it, they are definitely trying to move in another direction from where their father is. But then on the other side, on CBI, you have um, Jannard and Diamond, who are also basically trying to compete with each other on which direction things are heading. And so you have both of these like sibling rivalries going on on both sides. And here Tommy is just in the middle of all the family drama. Yeah, it might be a good place for him to be right now too, because while he's trying to establish himself, uh, he's definitely in the mix with all this family mess. Mm -hmm. And uh, not to say that he's gonna be the one that sorts it all out, but certainly it leaves the family vulnerable on both sides because they're so busy trying, you know, trying to clean up their own house. Yeah. And here comes Tommy, you know, and he's the cleanup man. He comes in and yeah, mm -hmm. I got the house for you, you know, but it's gonna cost you. Yeah. I just I'm worried about Tommy being in the crosshairs though, because uh, like after the meeting was done, he got in his car and he kind of looked in the rear view and he noticed these people in a car watching him taking photos and like so I'm like wow those don't don't look just like regular cops you know <laughs> so 
if he is going to be working with these different people, he's going to get caught in the crosshairs of all the mess they have going on too. And I don't think Tommy can afford to be locked up behind somebody else's nonsense. Well, I, when I looked at that camera with that 600 millimeter uh, uh, lens, I said, you know, normal local police don't have a budget like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so got to be some higher ups. Well, yeah. welcome back. We were just talking about, um, you know, Claudia uh, basically offering to work with Tommy. We talked a little bit about Jannard and Diamond having their big argument on the um, the uh, baseball field and where they kind of feel like they're competing for the top spot and Diamond is trying to usurp Jannard's kind of place in the streets that he's built up. So it's like basically a sibling rivalry going on on both sides, on the Flynn side and on the CBI side. And Tommy is here stuck in the middle. And, mm -hmm. and inadvertently, he's kind of in the crosshairs because we talked about the the, the agents or if they're FBI agents, it's definitely somebody more um, high up than just regular PD. So right. yeah, I think they feds. Yeah. And so I'm like, Tommy's getting caught up in the crosshairs of whatever both of these families have going on and he can't afford to get locked up at this point. <laughs> yeah. They think he's dead back in New York. So I'm like the feds sniffing around that can, you know, blow his cover. Oh, that's that right there, because the feds already know who Tommy is. And if they match what they those pictures with what they already have, you know, they're going to see that he's not dead. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as you're right, that just kind of that blows everything out of the water. So that makes me think that one of them is going to end up in Chicago. We're going to see some crossover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think there. Blanca is definitely supposed to be in the force. Um, if you look at like IMDb Blanca. <laughs> is uh on on the cast listing <laughs> so we i know people don't care for blanca so much sometimes but she gonna be on the show too <laughs> she on the case she on the case <laughs> um and then like i guess the uh other thing that i was gonna say about um i guess with who is this with claudia we talked about her um pill her new drug that was a part of like some FDA trials, apparently it failed for being too similar to cocaine. And so that kind of falls in line with her family business where it's kind of the best of both worlds because she gets the strength of cocaine, but it's in pill form. And so I wonder how Claudia and Tommy will work out. Um, and then of course with Liliana in the mix, I don't know about all that. It, it's, it's a lot of tension there probably uh with these different drugs that they're trying to push um and blend together so I don't really know how Tommy navigates you know all the options that he has and whether uh Claudia will seriously consider bringing him in because she told you know her girl like this is me and you I'm not bringing my family in on this and he's got too many options and and you know because now that you mentioned it he does have that option with uh Liliana he has the option with Claudia and as we see later on, you know, trying to uh, build this new uh, venture with with um, Vic and Diamond. So that's a lot going on for a boy just coming in from Chicago and still trying to stay alive, you know. You know, I'm wondering about Jannard, though, because at the end of the episode, he made a comment where, like I said, he allowed Jannard, um, he allowed Diamond to basically beat him in the boxing ring. But he told Elijah, he was like, you know, well, Elijah was telling him, you're going to split CBI down the middle. And he was like, yeah, you know, some people might go with him. Some people will come with me, but ultimately everybody's coming with me. And so I'm like, well, is he planning to take Diamond out either? You, I, said the same thing. I said the same thing to my son. I was like, oh, I don't like how that sounds. I said, yeah, I'm I like, is he going to set him up? That's, that's what I thought. I was like, ooh, what? Mm. I give think him the hand. Give Jannard the hand. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> You know what? I think Tommy, if it comes down to that, which I do believe it's going to come to head, but I think Tommy's going to take out Janab. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, push kind of shove. Yeah, because I think he and Diamond are are, uh, yeah. are getting closer and he already sees, like, you know, Diamond reminds him of ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. And he said, and he said what he said to Liliana too. Like he said, um, when she asked about ghosts and he said ghosts was dead. Um, Liliana said, did you do it? And he said, no, but I couldn't stop it either. So I think 
this time would be like a do-over for him. Like if Jannard, if it got to a point that Jannard started to move on Diamond, Tommy would probably intervene well, and try to save him since he couldn't save Ghost. I agree. I, and I think that 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 alliance that they have made, not just business-wise, but uh, personally, uh, will help them make that decision if it had to, had to be between Diamond and Jannard. Because he doesn't like Jannard anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think Tommy would have would, would last would take a second to you know take out uh, Jannard. He, he wouldn't think of uh, a second of Jannard acts like Dre because remember Dre was like her. He wanted to be yeah. like, why can't I be the distributor? He was so anxious to to be at the top. And Jannard, you know, to his credit, he has been at the top while Diamond was away. However, he he still has that. Um, I don't know. He's just he's anxious to be to be the man. Yeah. and stuff and um and that's just like dre and that's probably what tommy sees in him and like mm, yeah okay i'm exactly. good i'm cool off you right but so then, I'm, I'm sorry no go ahead it, it it brings to mind um other syndications or or other mafia types of uh dealings because when their head goes to jail and come out they still have a spot for them. you know here we are uh, you know, C CBI, a little small organization, and just because I don't think we're it's so big, small. well, small in comparison to uh, you know the Italian mafia or 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 the uh, uh, you know other large syndications is small in that regard because it's more territorial than there's anything else. But the mere fact that your head went to jail and he's out doesn't mean that you're supposed to sit him down, you know, put him to pastor. You know, you don't do that. I think that. It would have made more sense for Jannard to sit him down and say, okay, things have changed. Here is the change. What do you think? What do you have to offer? Let me be the muscle. Let me do whatever I got to do. Uh, I need a, you know, I need to be brought in a little higher or on another level because I have been running this thing since you've been in, in the bing. But you just can't walk over your big brother and think that that's going to mm -hmm. be okay because it's mm -hmm. not. I get it, but it's happening on both sides because that's exactly what's going on with Vic. Like he's trying to, he has a respect, I guess, for how things were, but in order to still remain relevant in the streets, he's saying like, we got to change up our lineup because what what's going on is where, if we continue down the path that we're on, we're not going to be relevant anymore and everything's just going to die out. And then on the flip side with Jannard and Diamond, Diamond has like a more conservative way to approach things. Whereas Jannard, I think that he, he has, he knows Chicago in the streets and the way that things are in Chicago's black community may be way different from like how it is on the North side and how it's structured up there. And so Jannard may feel like you gotta do what you gotta do. Like this is a means to an end. Like sometimes the violence and stuff like that is part of the territory. And since um, since Diamond hasn't been around to see it and he hasn't been around to witness the changes in the community, he could still be approaching it from a way that while it's logical and it makes sense to be more conservative, it's not practical because of the way the streets are. But money changes things. And Diamond understands that, um, you know, we see with, with, um, with Tommy and his brother, JP, you know, money changes things. What did he ask his brother? You know, he said, everybody has a number. And mm -hmm. he said, what's your number? You know, JP wants to give back the role that uh, Tommy gave him. You know, Tommy said, hey, the money's clean. It's, it's your money. We all know that that money is. You know, has <laughs> well, I mean, he did tell the truth. He did have a lot. He, he, he didn't tell him about his his uh, yeah. dirty business. Correct. But he did have cleaners and, yes, and laundry mats and all that other stuff in the club. So that part yeah. was true. No, I yeah, he, he, he did split that pee. And I understand that. You know, but uh, you know, when he asked him what his what his number was, what did he say? One hundred and ninety ninety six thousand. Yeah, two hundred and twenty three. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> he had an exact number, a exact very precise number. number. Right, and so money does change things, and you know, it can't be that different from when uh, Diamond went in. People still killing each other. They were killing each other then too. So I think Diamond is just trying to say, let's take this heat off the street. But I think it goes back to our conversation. I think we had this conversation um, with like Godfather Harlem. Like, do you rule with an iron fist or do you, would you rather be respected? 
And I right. think Diamond's method is like, I'd rather be revered and respected amongst my crew. Whereas Jannard is kind of like, I'm a rule with an iron fist. Like you want to know that like my, my word goes and he's definitely going to make sure that, you know, people understand his position, whether there's casualties involved or not. So I think that they just have different styles of doing things. And I think Jannard is saying like, this is the way things have to be done. Like you can't just ask politely. You gotta, you know, make them feel it. But I think there's room for both. That I is. think so too. But they just That's have to come to that realization. Right. Exactly. They Marianne have to too. realize that. Right. Yeah, the old school and the new school. There's a way to demarry the two. Exactly. And everything. Right. And, yeah. and the thing, I was surprised at Diamond because when he got out and he got to the barbershop, I thought that he really wanted to go legit. Mm -hmm. so, I, so, I, so I feel like he's being he's being lured back into the game is that the, the situation with because of Jannard the way he's doing things that's that's probably irking him a little bit and then the situation with Tommy so Tommy once again <laughs> like, <laughs> like he was trying to goes to trying to get out the game and Tommy is pulling Diamond into the game I mean back into the game well, he also has the Rojas issue too, because Rojas ain't ain't gonna let him go, you know, let him skate out of there easy. He took out two of his guys. And so I'm thinking that's still gonna be re repercussions from that. Yeah, that was Tommy too. That's why I said right, I but, he, but Rojas don't know that. Right. So but, that's not yet. But that's again, the sooner he gets his crew, the better he's gonna be. But you know, I, I think if Rojas well, see, and, and that's another thing too. If he were to a, a, actually able to get that merger with um, with uh, Flynn, and I don't think Rojas would be as quick to touch Tommy. Right. Yeah, you know? that's true. So, so it's really important that he he kind of you know works this deal that he's got, or, or attempting to work a deal that he's got with uh, the Flynn family, because I think that's going to give him the kind of clout that he needs to carry himself around Chicago. Well, if you've seen the previews for next week, I mean, I know we talked about this a little offline, but it seems like some some alliances are made. There's more going behind Dad's back. <laughs> yeah, it's it's ugly. It, 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 I mean, <laughs> when, when you look at all the plausible scenarios out of this 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 stuff that Tommy's gotten himself into, it don't look good. I mean, you know. You, you're going to cut your losses with somebody soon because you can't have this, you know, you, you, you can't be dealing with everybody at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Liliana, cut her short because I just don't, I, I don't see that. Yeah, she's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, if, if she couldn't tell me where those drugs came from, you know, because you got to develop whatever it is you got to do to protect yourself. You got to at first know where the drugs came from. And, you know, she didn't share that with me. So she's a liability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So I, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing how things work out because I definitely do like the way Tommy works. Um, him and Victor could have been a decent team. If it, like Victor stands to learn a lot from Tommy. Um, Women it, always it, mess it, that up. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. If it wasn't for that one little detail right. then they probably could have like he could have probably been a part of the crew because Vic stands to gain more from it I think than Tommy does exactly but the, the situation with the woman in the middle mm -hmm. well, you know, that's right. what I say oh they gonna right. come to blows at some point that's what I liked about BMF because you know they weren't they were saying they always they said we're not gonna have women come between us if my boy wants my girl so be it. you know well. You know, I, I know that's rare. That's a rarity. So, <laughs> but you know, like women, mm -hmm. you already coined that phrase. It's always a complication. That's us. Okay. That's gonna be the complication. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Yes, indeed. Mm. Yeah. Just call so. her Lila. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Um, I did enjoy this episode, even though you know some people thought it was slow. I think that it's all a part of the process. You got to lay out the storyline and story get things telling. set up. It's storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, and I wasn't mad at it. I still thought that no, it had. No, I wasn't some, mad at it either. Yeah, it had some good uh, meat in there to get us going for the uh, season. Yeah, and I just, could, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say yeah, because you can see the dynamics with uh, with uh, you know, with Jannard and Diamond, because you can see the friction and stuff. You can mm -hmm. kind of see with that where that's gonna go and where that's coming to a head, 
and everything. Yep. And so I, I'm I'm wondering like Claudia's angle. I know she wants to work with Tommy, but I know that she called him handsome. I know she got a girlfriend, but I'm like, does does she like men too? Is she gonna try to come on to Tommy? Like, yeah, I I heard I don't her. know. Yeah, because it seems like and I talked about this with Ron, but um Claudia knows how to use her looks to persuade people so I'm like is this just a persuasion tactic with Tommy or is she does, is she bisexual like is she inter interested in men and women um right. because I could but definitely uh, see them hooking up too I could see that too but the alderman she thought she was uh persuading him but he he was like uh he, he called her out like, he's like no I know you and I like the same thing so I yeah. was like, so I don't think her feminine wiles was working with him. <laughs> right. He already knew what time it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Claudia, I'm I'm hoping she gets, you know, a decent role, uh, you know, a screen time in this too, because I think her side of the story is interesting too. Yeah. Her story um, is interesting. Oh, she's a smart girl. She's um, ruthless in, this, in some degree because, you know, like, I said to you, you know, Tiara, mm -hmm. you know, just run up on Tommy. Yeah, when she pulled up on him, I was like, "Yeah, that that you don't do that." You know? But see, she don't know who Tommy is like that. He's coming from a whole other state, and in her city, like her family is the people that it's you don't big. mess with. Well, she goes <laughs> so... out real quick. And she, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but I enjoyed the episode. Um, I think that it's definitely starting to pick up and get the story laid out. And I'm looking forward to seeing how like all of these different um, relationships start to pan out and if they will stay intact, because I really don't think that a lot of these relationships and uh, partnerships are going to uh, last. Um, but I enjoyed it. Um, you guys got any other predictions or comments you want to throw out there before we wrap? Comments. I uh, wanted to thank um, Phil Donlin, who plays Simon, and um, and, and Joseph Shakur. Like, I like how they engage on Twitter, how they interact with the fans, because uh, Joseph Shakur asked the fans what we thought of Simon. So, of course, us being in the spot, we had to get in on that. And we said that we thought that it was time to cancel Christmas on Simon. And, and Joseph Shakur liked the comment. And and Phil Donovan, who played Simon, was like, whoa. And I said, well, I'm sorry. This spot, we're, spot with Team Tommy. Team Tommy. That's that's what it is. All day, Team Tommy. So he said, Tom Brady must have called us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I do like how they interact because they're definitely responsive to the fans. And I think that helps to increase like the uh, engagement and viewership of the show too. So uh, kudos to them for being so actively involved and it, it is it's really endearing to the fans i was gonna say the same thing because i remember when scandal another show that's now off the air you know that's how it got really popular i mean scandal was a, a great show but every week carrie washington and the crew they would like hey gladiators let's let's tweet let's this they engaged they talked about scenes and that does endear the fans to the show and to the, the characters and, and gets mm -hmm. the show more popular. So, you know, shout out to Force for knowing the assignment. <laughs> All right, got, uh, Ron, you got anything? No, I, I think that uh, it's shaping up the way we expect it to. And it is becoming uh, more interesting. And I think by mid season, a uh, lot's gonna come to a head. So five, yep. At five, it's gonna blow us apart. <laughs> and, you know whatever love you 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 may not or let's say for whatever you don't have now you will have in season five mm -hmm. uh i can see it coming to head it, it's definitely oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 okay. do we think some people said online that they thought that that they didn't trust jp now right now i think jp is, is you know he's straight and stuff but i'm like is there more than jp that oh. needs to act I don't think so. I, I think, and we were talking about it a minute ago, um, you know, when, because JP wants to be, you know, he's a straight up character, I think, so far. I think he's straight up. And, you know, he wanted to get that role back to Tommy. And, you know, and Tommy. You know how I feel about this. <laughs> uh, 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 you think he's he hiding something? I think he is. I feel like he's a little sketchy because, like, of course, you if you want to try to get in good with somebody or try to, like, um make it not seem like it's about the money then you try to like play it 
short and like, oh yeah, I don't want your money to like, and I'm not saying that he's necessarily even after uh, the relationship with Tommy for the money because he didn't seek Tommy out. They just bumped into each other. Right. So it was by chance. But um, the more he learns about Tommy, I think that JP's not as clean as we think. He has a record. So he's been to jail. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, what was he in jail for? Does he have n- another life? And like before he was caught up with taking care of his father, was that a thing? Um, I know he mentioned uh, that Miriam, the grandmother, had a trust. And that's how all of this stuff with the house was being, uh, with her uh, nursing home was being maintained but he's also remodeling her house and I'm like how is how is he remodeling her house I mean not unless she kind of handed over the um the rights to the home and uh, and is allowing him to do this I'm like that's why he needed the money that's why he said I gotta I I I have a number and that is that number to to remodel the house but you notice even when he said I thought it was for the bar bar too it could be for both but okay. remember, but also I thought it was remember, for the dad's like hospital bills or something. But and also remember, too. he never gave the money back. He wanted to give the money back. And, and Tommy said, hold on to it. And he said, let me see what I can't do, which mm-hmm. flipping the coin means I'll bring some more money to you later. So, right. so I don't see him being anything other than what he is. Could be wrong, but I just think he's a straight up guy. I'm glad to see Tommy is making an effort to really uh, bind that relationship, and and that's what he's really doing. I, you know, so Tommy Tommy is innocent in what he's doing. He wants to build this relationship with his half brother or whatever, and I get it. And um, I think as we as we go along, we're going to see JP kind of acquiescing into it. And you know, I think ultimately I, JP ends up being a part of Tommy's business on, on the legit face. side. Like he I, might try to use JP's bar as the business that cleans his front. I started to say that 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 might be what we see in his ability to acquiesce. He comes along and starts to thinking, you know, hey, you're going to need a place to launder your cash. Let's do it here or whatever it might be. I think he will join Tommy in the latter uh, episodes. Yeah, because he didn't seem like he was um, he, he didn't seem like he wanted to be involved in anything illegal because he was questioning where Tommy got the money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm still, I don't know. I'm suspicious. No, I hear you. Look, but the people online feel the way you do too. <laughs> I just think I need to see more in order to be persuaded that he doesn't have, you know, other motives. So that remains to be seen for right now. I still got my eye on JP. Or is it JP <laughs> or JB? No, I think it's, what's it, JP? I think it's JP. It's JP. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I got my eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll see how that works out. Um, and, you know, LaWanda should be back next week. Uh, I was really interested to hear what she had to say about this episode, but we'll get her input, you know, next yeah. week when she rejoins us. Um, she said something about, you know, enjoying the fact that Tommy was being the neutral party, mm-hmm. you know, trying to, um, you know, broker the deals on, on <laughs> all stuff. So I know that was part of the input that she wanted to provide, but I'm sure she'll she'll provide more next week. Uh huh. So uh, I just want to thank everyone for watching. Please make sure you drop down in the comment box and let us know what you thought about this episode. Um, please also make sure you are subscribed to our channel, like the video, and click the notification bell so that you get alerted every time we post. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, TikTok, all of the above, on all the social <laughs> media platforms. We are at the Spot Real Talk, so give us a follow there. Um, and make sure you also check out our Ozark recaps. Uh, we just filmed those. And so um, we are anxiously awaiting the remaining uh, remaining ep- episodes for the season. Um, so check out our Ozark recap. Um, you guys got anything else to add before we close out? Snowfall next week. We're recapping that too. Yes. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, and if you are not caught up or if you have forgotten what has gone down, go back to our Snowfall recaps and... and- refresh your memory yeah and watch our interview with scully last season we interviewed scully from snowfall deandre bonds so check out that interview as well got anything wrong i'm sorry ron no just i just want to say wherever you are we are all right you got it 
So thanks again, guys, and we will see you next week. Night. Oh, yeah. Night. Yeah. Yeah.